Well, good morning from a sunny, sunny Florida. This is a long time coming. We've been waiting for this a long time. Welcome back to the channel, by the way. Welcome back to the vlog. It's been a long time. It's been several months since I made a video. Been kind of busy and haven't really had the time that I needed. But this is the brand new, just released 2024 Grand Highlander. Thank you to Bob Tyler uh, getting a Grand Highlander Platinum Hybrid Max is not easy, very difficult. Um, so I appreciate all the effort that Bob Tyler went through to get this for us. This is my wife's vehicle and it is absolutely, absolutely stunning. I don't know if you can see it in the sunshine, but it does have that pearl paint on it. And it is, it is awesome. 362 horsepower, 400 pound feet of torque. The rear is not driven by a drive shaft. It's driven by the electric motors. So um, underneath there's no drive shaft that goes through. It's just the electric motors. This is a full three row SUV. We got the dog carrier in there for the little Ruby. We've got the manual sunshades, which actually do quite a nice job. They go pretty much all the way end to end right there. Obviously that's there on the other side as well. And we'll start in the back. We've got heated and ventilated seats in the rear. We got USB-C ports. We got a household outlet down there. It's got automatic climate control, which is in the ceiling. Even the third row has it. And we'll get to we'll get to the spaciousness of that in a second. I absolutely love the bronze accents, even in the even in the ultra suede. It does that. So the Platinum Hybrid Max is the only one that comes with uh, the leather interior and the ultra suede on there as well. Uh, beautiful step up here to get into the third row. And even with Ruby seat, all you have to do is pull this is number one and it pulls it back and forth. Number two, it dumps that. Number one, it dumps that and it slides it forward with that. Then you have, obviously this is your filter for the battery beautiful flat load floor and look at the spaciousness of this interior the other nice thing too is it does have a little area to tuck your seatbelt into right here so you can tuck your seatbelt in right there um, but also it has this nice grab handle so when you reach in you can reach in like this put your foot down here climb up and inside and this seat is all the way back and if I'm sitting here my feet go underneath I've got probably this much leg room so plenty of leg room I've got this much headroom plenty of that this seat can obviously go forward if it wanted to here but I've got a USB port back here I've got drink holders I've got my own AC vents back here I've got my own individual reading lights back here and there is room enough for the center to have somebody sit in the center. Obviously not a permanent thing, but very temporary. Um, you fold this down, obviously you've got tie downs here. There's four tie downs in total, one on each side and further in the back, but same thing. You have this cut out here and here, and that is for your rear cargo shade. So all weather mats and definitely plenty of room to get in and get out. It has a very nice step right here. This is really nice because you just step down and out of the vehicle and you're good to go. Then you just take this, fold it back, pull on that first lever, slide that seat back and that seat in the front is set to my seat so let's go to the other side and we'll check it out
everything is so nicely finished in here. It's got the nice little felt lining for the cup. It's got your little holder right here. Got more storage down there. Windows, obviously the shade is the same on the other side, but you step in. Plenty of, plenty of room, plenty of headroom. Here I've got that much headroom. Beautiful storage, you can set your phone here. You got your drinks here. This is removable, so you just pull it up and out and you can take it out if you need access to the third row all the time. And like I said, you got your household, you got your automatic climate controls here. And then obviously your vents up here it does have a full panoramic roof, but it does also have the shade that covers it. It has speakers literally everywhere and the microphones for talking in the car. So it makes it a lot, a lot, a lot nicer and a lot quieter. You got map pockets back here and stepping out. Now, Toyota says that you can put, and I got the key in my pocket so I can go like that. And it raises up. That you can put seven carry-ons. This is my uh, carry-on here. And um, if I were to say that this was one, and I put it here, and I know that this would be two, and then three, and then four, and then five, and then I guess you could lay two on top because it can't go this way. And I guess if you put it this way and this way, you could have some room, but um, yeah. Not sure if you can fit seven fully in there, but it would stack up to the ceiling. But there's more interior room back here than any other three-row SUV out there. This actually has more interior room than the Toyota Sequoia. And this Toyota Sequoia is a lot bigger and it's uh, 20 grand more expensive. So another vent for the battery and then your JBL sub. You got your household outlet back here as well. And then you have your all-weather mat. Underneath your all-weather mat, you have your Cover, which covers your jack. This is the window sticker of the vehicle. This is the cargo shade that we were talking about, the front license plate bracket that we don't need. And underneath this, we can pull it up partially and you can see underneath there, there is the spare tire. So it does have a mini, does have a mini spare. We'll put that back down. Uh, these also come back and recline. So you can go you can go up to that point there. So if you needed to get more room back here and you weren't necessarily worried about third row space, you can do that. And then it still, still would be a tight squeeze, especially with the wheels like that, but still plenty of room in here for the carry-on bag. But yeah, definitely very roomy I kind of like it like this because that way you've got a lot more room back there and then obviously there's several ways you can close it all the way and lock it down or unlock it you've got beautiful floodlights right here which are on an angle I don't know if you can tell there they're on an angle so they'll actually angle down here and light up this whole whole area right here so we will close it down obviously rear camera is standard the 360 camera is standard in this let's go over to the passenger front seat we said we just got this so we got the windows tinted we got the eyebrow tinted right up here this does have a heated windshield but just the base is heated down there to free up the wipers and again this is the the full leather interior and this is the ultra suede and you can see in the ultra suede, it has the bronze accents in there, along with the bronze leather here and the piping and the stitching on the inboard side of the seat. We've got another USB port. We've got the bronze accents here. We've got a nice storage tray in here to put your phone. We've got another storage area here for glasses and stuff. This is a wireless charging pad. Obviously another port, another port, the 360 camera view, your vents, which is the bronze accents on here and then your um, 
hazard switch there. Now this gets to the fun part. And what I think is the really nice part, everything's super integrated into here. You got a little tray back here to put something, but this just pulls back. You've got lots of room. You've got this removable tray that you can put in other areas. You have another port right here for charging, for accessories. And then you lock that in. These stay in place. These don't move. You've got a sport mode, eco mode, mud and sand, normal, rock and dirt. And I'll show you how that all works in the display when we get this fired up. We got snow mode, which we are going to need. I know it's Florida, but we are going to go skiing. So park brake, electronic, and then the hold button. That is for you not to have to keep your foot on the brake when you are sitting at a light. And obviously all the infotainment stuff is in here. We got a beautiful glove box, very deep, very big and nicely dampened with that shock right there. So that is it. Obviously your power button's over here. So let's go out over here. This is like a kind of a faux carbon fiber on different trims. On this trim, this is standard, but on different trims, you can get a wood-like look. Obviously it's not, it's not complete wood on here you do get these incredible uh 20 inch wheels and tires on here uh they are a two-tone they are specific to this model only uh they do not come on any other model you have the led high intensity lights this beautiful grill which is kind of like a like a i don't know if that's good, a great agate look to it it has Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, so it has a full complement of um, every safety feature you can have. So it's got the radar cruise and everything like that. It does have automatic high beams, the heated steering wheel, the AC volt, so you turn that on to get that. And then you have your tailgate button here, your odometer trip, and your brightness display there. Obviously, it does have auto high beams and auto wipers as well. So that is in there and if i have that in off drop that down that puts it back into auto and down here i can open my fuel door and then i can pop my hood and i have a nice little storage tray right here this does not have capless fill it does have a cap um, it does not require premium fluid fuel for that and then this goes right into here which is pretty cool it just as this tether, it sits here where you're filling up, and then that's that. Now, let's take a look under the hood. I haven't actually looked in here, but boy, that is really convenient. But the only thing that I'm not a big fan of, sorry about that camera angle, is at the price point of the car, you get a prop rod and not a actual strut dampers. Um, as some of you may know, I worked for Chrysler for a number of years. My father did too. And I can't imagine that could be any more than maybe two bucks a car to do that. So you have your um, hybrid system right down there. You can see your cabling in there and your hybrid generator right down there. And then obviously this is the turbo four again, 362 horsepower. It's a turbo, the turbo lives Right back inside there, 362 horsepower, 400 pound-feet of torque, 0 to 60 in about six seconds. So for um, this big old heavy SUV, it is pretty amazing. Uh, everything's really well labeled. Obviously, you got your oil, you got your coolant reservoirs, you got your washer reservoir, you've got your brake fluid reservoir, and your uh, auxiliary, and then you've got your heat shielding here, which is I really like this fact that they wrap that up and around and put that all around to really definitely reduce those under hood temperatures. And then this is obviously your air intake for your climate control system. So bear with me one second while I close this down. Also, if you see in there, there's your actual bumper and that is actually a full foam structural support for impact. So even though there's a good, like I would say, eight inches between the actual radiator and this front of the grill. You've got a large impact area right there. 
and um, it definitely uh, definitely will do that. You can see your, I think you can see right in there, that is your radar sensor for your cruise control. And then down here, where you see my finger, that's your front camera right there. So let's try to do this prop rod. And then obviously your engine air filter lives right, right in there, but that is it, obviously. It is a turbo Toyota, and then you get it to about here and just let it go. Beautifully sealed across the front, I love that. And you've got your suite of cameras and everything up here as well. Let's roll on into the inside. Now, the passenger seat does not have lumbar support, it's not even available, but it does have full power. And again, I really love this attention to detail, how they've got that bronze in there. And here, that's just, it's really, really pretty. We'll get in the car, not to mention the bronze accents here around the steering wheel. And it's just a really nice, chunky, thick steering wheel. Um, we'll close the door. You do have memory settings, your windows, your mirrors. They do have auto fold when you lock and with that nice thud. It purrs to life. So you get the nice startup sequence in here. You've got your ventilated seat controls, your heated seat controls. Like I said, your heated steering wheel is over here. Um, everything here is labeled. You've got rear climate. So like I said, you can have that set to auto. So if we go to the rear climate, we can see that it is set to auto and then you can adjust the temperatures over here on that. And that is tied in because it is in the sync mode. So everything is set at 72 degrees. You can turn the rear climate control off if you wanted to. You got your recirc and everything like that. Um, my feeling about this is the best bet is just to keep it in auto and just leave it and let it do its, let it do its business. So you have a myriad of options in here to go with. You hit the OK button and then you can go and configure all kinds of different stuff in here. So you can have the map in there, you can have the drive support, you can have it uh, show your settings, you can have it show pop messages, or you can just keep it blank. We like to keep the drive support there. Now if I go over here, I can have audio in there. I can show the all-wheel drive system if I'm in the snow. I can just keep it blank and I can show the fuel economy, I can show the eco score, I can show the EV ratio of if I'm, no percentage I'm getting EV range in, I can have it in navigation, we kind of like to have it in auto, and we can come back across over here. We keep this one blank, but you can have your drive support system in there. Also, you can have your drive information in there, which is your trip distance and everything. And you can have trip A, um, you can have your energy monitor. So obviously you can see the engine is putting power into the battery right now because the battery is about half or a little less than half um, used up. So then we can go back over here. And we can go and change this. I don't know if I like that. I'd rather just keep it this way. And let's go back to drive support and then we'll come back over here. We don't really want anything in the in there. I think it looks better if it's just if it's just blank and there's nothing there. So anyway, the um, vehicle does have complimentary Wi-Fi for the first I think 30 days. Uh, we don't need to worry about that. You have all your music options in here. So you got satellite radio, AM, FM, and you can also use your Bluetooth. You can stream everything like that. Let's we'll see your phone connection. There's no devices connected currently. And then all your uh, vehicle information so you can monitor your energy flow. That's kind of a cool thing where it's showing that. And then we can go back. You can look at your climate information your rear and then you can look at your options so you can have your de-icer on so let's say we're coming into winter we can turn the de-icer on and 
it does it there, but we don't really need it right now. So we got eco heat and cool. We're not too worried about that. Obviously rear, you can have it in rear auto, which it's, which it's on right now. And so everything works in the rear in auto and the same in front and it's all synced. Uh, there is the settings menu, so you can see all that. Um, and then this Navi system is cloud-based, so there's, there are uh, over-the-air updates for it. However, this does have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and that is far superior to any navigation system. I know a lot of people complain that the navigation system isn't updating and blah, 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 and, you know, you need to do this and that and everything else, but, you know, um, Apple and Android are just the kings of it all. So, all right, so moving on, we've got our lights up here. We've got our sunshade. We've got our sunroof because it does it does open completely, and then you close it. Now the other thing you can do too is you hit it one more time and it takes the takes the vent down, and then you can you do have to hold that for just a second, and then it closes that shade up here. I do have a lot of extra lights in the garage, so. I wanted better clarity. That's why I had that open. You do have a heads up display. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but it does give you a full heads up display in full color. But get your suite of radar cruise control modes, your audio modes over here with your telephone, your back button, and then your adjustments are made through here. The headlights are auto. Wipers are in auto. You do have paddle shifters up and down and maybe in the camera you can see this is the monitor that monitors your um, face and your vision. So it can tell if you're looking at the road or you're looking down or you're looking behind you and perfect segue. We do have a full home link mirror but that mirror then changes into a rear view camera. So the rear view camera option is great. I loved it on the TRX and I loved it on every car that I have that has it, I want it on there. So we go down here and we hit this. I, I don't know, this, if I want the camera thing, I mean, it's just showing me a 360 view of the car, which is great. It kind of gives me my surroundings of, of where I'm at. And that's great and all. It's just, I don't know, I don't know not 100% sold on that um, at all. Not sure what that's for, but I'm not, I'm not a big fan. Anyway, you put the brake on, you put the shifter over to the left, push it up, it goes into reverse, push it down, it goes into drive. And when you push it over and down, it goes into manual mode. And then over and then down again, it goes into drive. But let's say you're in reverse, and when you're in reverse, you can see that you get the 360 camera, which is great. You also have the washers for the um, cameras. You get the full 360 view right here with your sensor warnings and then your backup camera, and then you put it in drive and you're good to go on that. The car does obviously go forward when you're in drive and then you put it in reverse. Up comes that camera and it warns you if you're getting too close to something or too far away. And then two options, you can just power it off and it'll, it'll go into park, or you can hit the park button. Let's just power it off. It automatically goes into park, everything shuts down. And that is pretty much it. The thing you can't see is that there are, there are these puddle lights from Toyota that illuminate the Toyota logo. You can see it in my hand right there. Um, and let me see if there's another light under here that it's hard to, it's hard to see that, but it says, I don't know if you can see that in my hand, but it says Grand Highlander. So it illuminates on the floor and on the ground, Grand Highlander, and it gives you the Toyota logo. Uh, that is that is pretty awesome. 35 PSI on the tires. You have 1,245 pounds of cargo weight rating on here. The um, vehicle is 
rated to tow 5,000 pounds if it has a trailer hitch equipped, which this does not, but you can go to any Toyota dealer and have a trailer hitch installed right there. It ties in, it's all integrated, and um, it's, a, it's a towing machine. It's got 400 pound feet of torque. I'm pretty sure it could tow some good stuff. So anyway, welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna start to try to produce more videos, uh, but this is the first one in quite a little while. Uh, also, you've got your air curtain right here. So air comes through here and exits out into the fender area right in here for aerodynamics. You notice your fog lights. Um, this, is, this is an amazing, an amazing vehicle. And like I said, it's 20 grand cheaper than a Sequoia. And it is bigger on the inside than a Sequoia. You got more room on the inside, but it's smaller on the outside, so it's easier to park. So I, I just don't see why they wouldn't sell a trillion of these things because these are absolutely incredible. Um, another little tidbit, obviously with the Hybrid Max, that's the only wheel option you can get. You can't get it on any other vehicle. And let's say you can't tell if it's a Hybrid Max by the badge. This is the only vehicle that has actual the, the true dual exhaust. Let me see if I can get down here and show what this looks like underneath that that's the um, electric, that's the electric motor underneath there that um, drives the rear wheels right there. There's no drive shaft that goes through there. So anyway, that is the tour of the Grand Highlander. And one more thing, the other really nice thing is the Grand Highlander key is also bronze to match the interior. It's the, again, you can't get that key in any other model. So anyway, thank you again. Please like and subscribe to this video. We got more content coming. Uh, we got a new garage, so we got plenty of, of room to do that. Working on getting the floors done so that everything is really nice and bright in here and obviously I've got the wall box for the Rivian, which is right there. I got another video coming on that shortly. So once again, thank you so much for like and subscribe to this video and have a fantastic day. Don't forget, if you need a Toyota, get over to Bob Tyler Toyota. They do an absolutely, absolutely 100% unbelievable job. Have a great day.